Science takes simple ideas, like the sun will rise tomorrow, and complicates them. How does the sun rise? What thousands of factors perfectly align in order for that to happen day after day? I love science because it's difficult. At times, it can be immensely challenging. But the payoff is a depth of understanding about how the world functions. The ability to both be simple and complex is a defining characteristic of science, and this duality is fascinating for those who attempt to unravel it. I'm an undergraduate studying biochemistry. I work in a lab that exposes me to both simple and complex ideas on a daily basis. And while the idea of the sun rising is both simple and complex on a macro level, that same duality exists on a micro level as well, within our cells and within our DNA. Our DNA is both quite simple and at the same time incredibly complex. Our bodies are made up of trillions of cells, and within each of those cells, our DNA is divided into approximately 25,000 genes. Those genes are called the genome and, called for every and code for every facet of our physical being. The human genome can be thought of as a book with thousands and thousands of pages. And the amazing thing is, we now have the ability to make rewrites in that book, to make edits in a sense, to change the human story. There are multiple ways in which we can do this, but today I'm going, to I'm going to talk about the newest and easiest method that's already being used all over the world, a revolutionary genetic editing tool called CRISPR-Cas9. CRISPR-Cas9 is beautifully simple. This technology, CRISPR for short, is made up of only two components. The first component is Cas9, outlined in white, and the second component is guide RNA, shown in red. Cas9 is an enzyme responsible for creating a double-stranded break in DNA and can be thought of as a pair of molecular scissors. Guide RNA stays true to its name as it literally guides the Cas9 protein to a specific location on the genome, resulting in a very precise cut by Cas9. Now, once that cut is made, genes can be inserted, deleted, or changed based on the goals of the project. CRISPR is inexpensive easy to use, and extremely precise as compared with older methods of genetic engineering. A project that may have once taken hundreds of thousands of dollars over the course of a couple years can now be completed for a few hundred dollars over the course of a matter of days. CRISPR is so simple, in fact, even an undergraduate could use it. <laughs> I use CRISPR <laughs> in my research looking at how cancer cells behave. CRISPR is going to change the way we think about genetic engineering, and its rapid adoption and widespread use is thanks to its simplicity. However, as simple as CRISPR is to use, the ethical challenges we face when it comes to genetic engineering are equally as complicated. But the reality is, genetic editing is here, and I truly believe the payoff will be great. One day, we may live in a world without HIV, a world in which genetic disorders are curable, not just treatable, but curable. Here are just a few of CRISPR-Cas9's current and future uses. In molecular biology research, CRISPR has helped identify the purposes of many genes, providing immense insights into things like how we develop cancer and how we age. In livestock, CRISPR has been used to cure pigs of a respiratory virus that costs North American pig farmers $600 million every year. CRISPR is also being used to breed cows without horns to protect other cows and farmers from injury. By breeding cows without horns, CRISPR has eliminated the painful practice of having to saw them off. To cure viruses and diseases, viruses work by inserting their viral DNA into a healthy genome. In the lab, CRISPR has shown to cut out the viral DNA of HIV in cells, effectively curing those cells of HIV. At this rate, outbreaks like the Zika virus and its devastating effects may eventually be things of the past. And one day, CRISPR may even be used to cure people of a wide range of genetic disorders before they are even born. I'm guessing some people may have had a negative reaction to some of those proposed and current applications of CRISPR, and the terms GMOs and designer babies may have even come to mind. Those feelings are valid because tampering with the genome is a complicated and often emotional topic. But because CRISPR is already being used all over the world, 
we are now being forced to have conversations about the safety and ethics of genetic editing far sooner than had been anticipated. This brings me to three complications associated with genetic editing. Complication number one, non-medical versus medical genetic changes. There's a commonly held notion that genetic engineering would quickly lead to designer babies, which means tampering with the genome in order to make non-medical changes, such as making someone taller or shorter or blonde-haired or fair-skinned. But many of our physical traits are polygenic, meaning they may be controlled by up to hundreds of different genes and are often very complicated to understand. On the other hand, many genetic disorders result from infuriatingly small genetic mutations. Sickle cell anemia results from a single base pair mutation. Cystic fibrosis results from three base pair mutations out of three billion. So again, if we think of the genome as a book with thousands of pages, curing sickle cell anemia would be like removing a comma. Curing cystic fibrosis would be like changing a sentence, whereas making someone taller would require rewriting an entire chapter. That being said, the perceived difficulty of engineering designer babies is not reason alone to not discuss them. It will require diligence to ensure this technology is never abused in that way. This brings me to the second complication, which is genetically modified organisms versus genetically edited organisms. In the United States, determining if a food should be labeled GMO is a convoluted process and is often evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis by the USDA. You may also be interested to know that already 90% of all of our soybeans in this country are considered GMO. The irony is that many scientists believe that some non-GMO practices, such as selective breeding, may actually be just as harmful, if not more so, than other GMO techniques. This, this is because centuries of selective breeding have resulted in bulky, random, and occasionally detrimental gen genetic mutations. This phenomenon is called linkage drag. And again, if we think of a genome as a book, linkage drag would be like ripping out an entire chapter, shuffling the pages, and pasting it back randomly into the text. This is the part where I promise I'm not advocating for making unbridled genetic alterations. But CRISPR is uniquely distinct in that it offers extremely precise, controlled, and trackable changes to the DNA. Because of these differences, CRISPR warrants a new term. If CRISPR-edited food ever does hit the shelves in the United States, it may be labeled GEO, standing for Genetically Edited Organism, as opposed to GMO. It's possible GEOs would succumb to the same level of scrutiny and outright consumer rejection that GMOs have succumbed to, but only time will tell. This brings me to the third complication, which is science itself is indefinite. My younger self would be devastated by this realization because I was drawn to science for its definitive nature. I wanted a simple answer as to why the sun rises. But after years of studying science, I have come to realize there is really no such thing as a perfect science. Much of science is rather imperfect. But the potential benefits CRISPR offers humanity are far too great to continue thinking in black and white about genetic editing in a space commonly known as the gray area. CRISPR will challenge us to embrace the gray. Here's an example of the grayness of genetic editing as it pertains to lawmaking. One day, if CRISPR advances to the point of being used in human therapies, a law could pass that says, genetic editing shall not be used to make non-medical changes. Well, that seems reasonable. But wait, people with darker skin are less susceptible to skin cancer, which is clearly a medical condition. Would that situation permit a geneticist to alter a person's skin color in the hopes of reducing their susceptibility to cancer? Welcome to the gray. There is a general consensus right now that CRISPR is too new to be used in viable human embryos. And I should point out, it's still illegal in this country for any federal funding to go towards research that results in the creation or destruction of viable human embryos. But things will eventually change. It is human nature to crave definite answers we easily become polarized on certain issues and downright avoid conversations that may have complicated answers. But the potential benefits CRISPR offers humanity are far too great to continue thinking in black and white about genetic editing. The influence of CRISPR is already immense and will likely continue to affect the lives of many people throughout my lifetime. One of the inventors of CRISPR, named Jennifer Doudna, 
predicts it will reach clinical trials as therapy within the next 10 years. CRISPR has legitimate safety and ethical concerns, but also an immense capacity to alleviate human suffering. In science, there is both simplicity and complexity. In complexity, there is gray, and in gray, there is opportunity. And one day, just as the Earth is illuminated by the light of a simple sunrise, CRISPR may illuminate a whole new chapter in the human story. Thank you.